In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus gives us some wise advice. He tells us that when judging a sinning brother, we need to go on the testimony of two or three witnesses rather than simply one person's statement. Sounds fair enough? Here is the text. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. In this verse, Jesus is quoting Deuteronomy 19 verse 15, which states, One witness is not enough to convict anyone accused of any crime or offence they may have committed. A matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I'm thinking, why not use the same criteria to establish the resurrection of Jesus? Our witnesses are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Remember, we need two witnesses to agree in order to establish a verdict. We'll be taking their testimonies into account as we ask the first question. Who came to the empty tomb? Matthew advises that it was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Mark writes that it was Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, and Salome. Luke informs us that it was Mary Magdalene, Mary, mother of James, Joanna, and other unnamed women who came to the tomb. Boy, that makes Jesus sound like a real ladies' man. Finally, John testifies that it was Mary Magdalene, who then brings Peter and John. Oh, well, we don't even have two fully matching witnesses here. Let's ask another question. What did they see at the tomb? Matthew, embellishing the scriptures as always, advises that an earthquake happened. Then an angel descends and rolls the stone away. Mark tones it down a little, advising us that the stone was already moved and a young man is sitting inside. Luke tells us two men appeared in shining garments standing inside the tomb. Last up, John's version of events tells us two angels were sitting inside the tomb. Oh, it seems once again we have no match. This just doesn't make sense. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why didn't God make sure the witnesses all saw the same thing? Out of four gospel authors, not even two agree on the events of resurrection morning. According to Jesus' own advice, the testimony of his own resurrection cannot be established. Wait. I have an idea how to resolve this problem. Remember the contradiction regarding the death of Judas? Then Judas threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and went and hanged himself. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Some Christians like to think the way to resolve this contradiction is to combine the two. Judas hangs himself, the rope breaks, and he falls headlong into the field and dies. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I don't buy it either. But hey, since we're stretching believability, let's use the same logic with the tomb. First, Mary Magdalene comes, then the other Mary, then Mary the mother of James, then Salome, Joanna, miscellaneous other women whom we might as well name Mary since half the other women are also called Mary. Then finally, we've got Peter and John. An earthquake occurs, and an angel rolls the stone away. Inside the tomb is a young man sitting down who is not Jesus. There are two other guys in shining garments, and oh wait, there's two other angels sitting inside as well. Oh, you know what? I forgot about the cross. Not one of the gospel writers agree what was written on the sign above the cross. That's okay, because what probably happened was all four signs were nailed to the cross at once. Problem solved. 